So we've done all these operations with, with, with the tidyverse to um, select variables and filter and start to do some math on things. Um, but what we're going to talk about here is um, starting to make some sense of the data, um, lots of different counts of things or um, some basic, basic statistics um, on your variables of interest. So to recap, we have these different verbs in the tidyverse um, that we'll use very frequently. Those are select, um, that allows you to subset and reorder different columns. Uh, we have filter, we have arrange and mutate. Um, select and filter uh, can be used, you know, are very often combined together um, because you might want to make your data set a little bit smaller and easier to work with. Um, for your for you know analyzing um, particular things about it, um, and then select you can always just um, if you only want a certain number of columns, um, you can just only select those columns in your select statement. Or if you just want to drop one out that you know you're no longer interested in, you can just use the minus sign in front of that. And then you can do all of these steps sort of sequentially. Uh, using this pipe operator. Um, so hopefully the, the lab gave you some practice with that. Um, if you want some, if you need a cheat sheet for all of these different dplyr verbs and everything, um, we've provided those here in the um, in the slides, but there's also a bunch of cheat sheets on the, the course website. So please free free to use those um, or find some other ones that might be available just constantly reference them until they are ingrained in your brain. Um, it, it can take a while just to remember certain, what each of these things do, um, or just have it at the tip of your tongue um, to be able to just write it without thinking too much about it. So that's part of the developing the, the intuition for R. So this is the, the cheat sheet again. Um, it gives you some nice data about some explanation about how it works, what's the structure of the different arguments within the function, um, and, and what it does, um, and sort of examples that you might use. In data summarization, we can do all sorts of kind of basic statistics um, that we might do, that we might be interested in running. So you can get the mean, uh, you can get the standard deviation, the median, um, the quantiles. Um, so usually these are just statistical um, quantiles that you might be interested in. Um, the default is to give you the minimum, um, the inner quartile range, which is the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile, and then the median and the max. So you get sort of this nice number sum summary um, of the distribution of the data. Um, range will give you the, the minimum and the maximum, um, but it displays it kind of on the same line. Um, the sum gives you the total of all of the data, and then the min and the max do what you think they would do. Um, so just give you, just to work with a small data set, we have, you know, so X is one, five, seven, four, two, eight. I can run a mean on that. I can run a standard deviation on that. Um, when I do the range, it will give it as two numbers right next to each other. Um, I could also do this, you know, as I said in the code, it's equivalent to doing this. Or as I showed some other people, um, before you can also, if you just want two things, if you want to run two kind of statements on the same line, you can run put a semicolon after it, and it'll give you one after the other, one eight. Um, so this is it works the way you think it should. Um, you know, the sum is just the the arithmetic sum of all the numbers. Uh, okay, so note that 
many of these math, net math functions have this na.rm argument. And those are there um, because sometimes your data will have NAs in it. Um, say in a clinical trial, one person just like didn't show up for an appointment. And so that measurement wasn't taken. Um, and so the data set may leave that person's data out and just put it in a there. The trouble with that is that it will cause the mean to, it, when it's in there and you, and it assumes that NARM is equal to false, that's the default, it will say the mean is NA. Um, so it cannot calculate the mean if that NA is in there and you're, and you're saying treat, the, treat all these numbers the same. So you have to keep NARM equal to true. And remember, remember when you use these logical statements, true or false, they have to be all capitals. Um, okay, so the, another thing that we're gonna work on is, so quantiles. So um, if you, quantile is the same thing where it has NA, you have to specify NARM to get it to work. Um, so I have an example here with NAs in it. Um, so the mean won't work unless you specify NA and RM is equal to true. Quantile won't work same way, but once you've told it what to do with those NAs, um, it'll get, it'll do it just fine. Um, and we'll talk a minute. So one thing that one argument that's in the quantile function that's not really shown here um, are the probabilities. So you can actually specify like, I wanna see, um, I think it's probs, is it probs? Oh, I have to remind myself, quantile. Yeah, it's probs. So in the, in the quantile function, it sort of assumes um, zero, from zero to one by 0.25. So it's the zero if the 25th, the 50th, whatever. So you could also just be this. I will only want the, the top 90, you know, top fifth percent or 2.25 percent. And that's what it'll give me. So it'll only give you the quantiles that you um, ask for if that, if that statement is in there. Um, so statistics, you know, these summary statistics can work on numbers, um, but they can also work on logicals. Um, so when you use true, false, there's an implied numeric value to those. So false is, is equal to zero and true is equal to one. And so if you do this, um, you will actually get a sum of two because there are two trues in there. So you can always, if you have a column that's all logicals or something like, and you want to know what is the, the average number of yeses in this data set, you can just run a mean on that and it'll give you an answer. But it will not work on characters. So if, if these are true, false, or yes, no, um, you know, in quotes, it won't work in the same way. It only works if these are formatted in this logical fashion in all caps. Which we'll show how to do in the next module. So we can use this JHU CARS um, data set to explore some different ways of summarizing data. Um, remember using the head function will tell you just the first six rows of your data set. Um, and as Carrie showed you, one of the ways that you can just look at a single column using just um, using base R is to use this dollar sign. So I'm saying in the JHU cars data set, let's only look at the, the horsepower column. And then I can run a mean on that and get a value out. Luckily, I didn't get anything wrong here because there are no um there are no NAs in this column so it works just fine without that um specifying how to treat NAs quantiles work in the same way um alternatively you might be able to say um 
if you want to do it the tidy way, um, you could do JHU cars. Um, pull HP mean. I get the same value, 146.68. Um, I could do the same thing in quantile. It does the Great. Same answer. Oh, I forgot that we did this. <laughs> it's on the next slide. Um, so uh, if you want to use the median, you know, the median will do in, work in the same way. You just say within this data set, pull out the weight column and give me the median. Or if I want just the 60th percentile, just say quantile and then the, the probs of 0.6. So specifying only that quantile is the one that I'm interested in. Uh, yeah, Will, when, you, when you're basically just saying run this, um, run this function on the data that precedes it in the, the pipe, you don't need to put anything in those, in those parentheses, but you do need the parentheses there. Because the way that the pipe works is there's just, it's it's pulling all the data set through the pipes. So it's equivalent really to saying, so this function is equivalent to saying, um, so JHU cars pull is JHU cars, oh, doing this wrong. Pull. HP right and then running quantile on JHU cars pull so the pipe just pulls okay. like takes that JHU cars thing runs the pull function on it and then pulls it all the way through to put it into the quantile. So imagine like that's just in here, but it's just sort of implied that it's there. I think also if you run it with a dot, it does the same thing. So the dot actually in, in the tidyverse means carry this data set through. It's just that dot is sort of implied. You could also think of it as a sentence. So take the JJU cars data, pull the weight, data out and then take the quantile, if that is more intuitive to you. Yeah, it's, there's sequential operations that are just running. So some other functions that you can run um, on, on data, data frames, um, you can use row means, which takes the mean of each row in a data, in a data frame. Um, col, col means takes the mean of each column, row sums does the sum of each row, and the col sums is the, the sum of all the columns. And then this summary function um, will actually, for every single column in your data, it will give a statistical summary of, of that data. So we're going to use um, this JHUR package of of data, um, there's a TB, a tuberculosis data set um, that we'll be working with. Um, and there's kind of two alternative ways of getting it, um, but you can just load it from the JHUR package. And what it looks like is there's um, a set of countries um, on the leftmost column. Um, and then within that, uh, for each country, for each year of the data, uh, the cells actually give you the tuberculosis incidence, the number of cases in that year. Um, from 1990, 1990 all the way to 2010, I think, or 2007. 
just a different way of looking at the data with the, the str function. Um, this data set is kind of funky. We've got a funky first um, column. It has all, of, it's a very, very long column name with some parentheses um, and spaces. So it has to, you have to refer to it using these back ticks, kind of annoying. So we're going to use the rename function um, to name it as country, just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So I'm just going to catch up here. So, oh no, okay, no, it's here. Okay, so library JHUR, TV read TV. So now I have my TV data, and I don't like that first column. So we're going to call it here. And we can look at TV, make sure that it looks the way we want it to look. So we've got countries all on our first column, and then all of these years of data of tuberculosis incidents. Okay, looks great. Um, and then so we can use this col names uh, function to actually just tell us what all the col column names are. And they are what we expect they, them to be. So to use this summarize verb, this is a really general function um, that we can put um, a lot of other things in there and can we can uh, do multiple summarizing steps all at once. So within this, you would have just the general format is to take the data that you're using. Um, so say, for instance, TV, a pipe, and then summarize, open parentheses, and then any of the things that you're wanting to do. So an operator may be something like a mean or a quantile. Um, and then this summary column name is just going to run the summarizing function um, and put it into a new column in your summarized table. So what this will make for you, summarize is going to make a new table for you. It's not adding new columns of data like mutate does. It, it, this is going to make a new summarized data table. So here's some examples. TV is our data set. We're going to pipe and we're going to have summarize. And I want to know what the mean incidence is for 1991. Remember, it doesn't like just numeric column names. Um, and so it needs to have these back ticks. When we run this, unfortunately, we get NA. Probably means we have NAs in the data set. And so we have to tell it how to deal with those. And so you can say, just like you do out, outside of the summarize, um, you can just say for the mean of 1981, NA RM is equal to true. And it will give you a value. Notice that this little tibble only includes the things that are in this summarized statement. It doesn't include anything, any other data that was in TD. It's just what you asked for. So summarize can actually, like I said, do more operations all at once. Just it'll do it one by one. So in addition to mean of 1991, you could also do the median of 1991, or you could do the median of 2000. And when you run all of this code, uh, it'll tell you mean of 1991, 108, just like you saw before. Median of 1991 is 58. And then this median of 2000 is 60. Notice, however, that because I didn't include a new name for this last variable, um, it just basically includes all of this as the, the new column name. So it looks a little messy. You would want to maybe add a name to that. So median of 2000 is, is, the, is gonna be the output so that your summary table is nicely organized and you can, you can interpret it really well. 
but you could you could add ten more functions to this, um, and it will just add them to your sum your summary table. Um, so the reason you need back ticks and not quotation marks um, is because uh, R doesn't like to deal with numbers in column names. Um, and so it's kind of, it's, our, it's, it's way of, of saying, signifying that this is a column name um, and not a, um, and not a, not a value or anything. I think the reason it's not in quote, quotation marks is because that is just the general format for tidyverse. So um, when you're doing a mean on a column, uh, let me show you an example of, so let's do uh, NT cars. That's our really common thing. Summarize um, mean cylinder is equal to mean sill. Hopefully this works. Um, I lost it. There we go. No, nope, still not fine. So in the tidyverse, when you're doing these summarizing functions, you don't need that the, the quote marks for column names. You can just kind of leave them outside like that like leave them without quotes um, because it knows because you've piped this um, it knows that it's referring to a column within empty cars. All right. Um, so col column means and row means um, you can run them just fine. Um, but the caveat is they will only give you an answer if all of your data are um, numeric. So it's the, the way that we've created this TV data set may make that a problem because remember, I'll just remind you this, the structure of this data set TV. Um, country is a column. So if I try to run row means on this, it's not going to like this first column of data because it's a character. It's, you know, it's a character. So it won't actually give my give me what I want. So what we'll have to do here is actually take those column, that column of country, um, and turn it into row names. Notice this var is equal to country is what's needed when you're you're doing this column to row names function, because um, column to row names is not a tidyverse function. So you need to actually specify a variable name, and this is the 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 very the column name that I'm interested in. So let's run that. Um, so TB two now, what does that look like? So I've removed actually the that column of country names, and I've shifted them over to be row names. Um, and now I can run a row name row names function on there. And it'll give me all of that data. If I removed that, if I removed NARM, I would bet it gives me mostly NAs or some NAs. Luckily it doesn't. Oh, it does. There's one. Montenegro. So it won't give you, you know, if you're doing this row, row means, it's actually doing mean kind of iteratively, it's moving through each of the, the rows of the data um, and running the mean on all of that row. So it won't give you NA for every single one of them. It'll only give you an NA for the rows that have NAs in them. Um, column means kind of runs in the same way. So it'll tell you for each of those columns, what is that, you know, what is the mean of all of the incidents for all of the countries minus the NA values. So again, many of the years actually have NAs 
in some of the columns. So this won't actually work very well um, if there's lots like so you have to you have to be very careful um, and include this in there, especially if your if your data has any NAs in it. Uh, this summary function that I talked about before is different from to summarize. Um, so just be careful there. So summary is is a base R function that will tell you for each of the columns of data, just a, a statistical description of the data in that column. In the country, it, it says there's 208 values and all of them are, are character values. So it can't really do a statistical summary of that. But for 1990, you've got some incidences that are zero, the max is 585, and it's got one NA in there. This is a really nice operation kind of before, if you are if you don't want to scroll through your whole in, enormous data set, you could run summary on it and just see, are there any NAs that might exist in there? Or are there like huge statistical outliers? Um, you know, something with a max of 10 million would be really weird. And you might wonder if somebody like entered, entered data wrong. This is a nice way of doing that. Glimpse is another one um, to just kind of get a nice statistical description of your data. Okay, so in summary, we, you can use a lot of um, these operations like mean and standard deviation, quantile, following a pull statement. So you can pipe you know, a data set, pull out a particular variable, and then run mean on it. Just, um, but be careful, you need to have this NARM is equal to true if your data has any NAs in it. Summary will give you just a nice statistical description of your data. And summarize is a very general uh, statement that will allow you to run a bunch of summary statistics on your data all at once and output it as a new table. Jumping back in. All right, so I've so shown you some, some basic ways of doing summarization. We'll dig into a few other ways of, of doing this. For this portion of the lecture, we're gonna work with another data set. This is the Youth Tobacco Survey. That is also part of the JHUR package. Um, so you can just read that in with this statement, read underscore YTS. So let's get that loaded in here. Great, it's in there, it's in my environment. We can take this YTS and we can just look at all of the different location data that are in there. Um, so it's just gonna give us a very, very long vector of all of the state names. And it's, it's just gonna give me all of them, all 9,794 of them that are in the data set. What I could do is if I just wanna see all of the unique values, um, there is a, a function for that called unique. Um, so I've already I've already saved locations as a separate object, or I get or I could do that here, right? So locations is is one big thing, and then I can run unique locations on it, and it should give me fifty values, right? So fifty values for each of the states. And if I run a length of that, length unique locations, I get 50. Alternatively, I could just do um, locations uh, unique length. Does that actually do what I want it to? Same thing.
Another th option is to use distinct, um, but they sort of give you slightly different results. Um, so unique is a base R function. Um, so what it gives you is a vector. Distinct is a tidyverse function. And so its default is to give you a tibble. So let's, let's look at this. So it's going to give me um, all 50, right? It's going to be a tibble of length 50. And it's just a list of values, just like the, the distinct one, or just like the unique function. Another really, really useful function for summarizing is count. Uh, what it will give you is a tibble um, of length of all of the unique values in that column that you're looking at. So we're still looking at just the location. So it'll take all 50 of those unique locations, but just count how many times each of those shows up in the data set. Right? So Alabama shows up 378 times um, in, in this data set. And if I, I believe, if I run this, um, does it summarize um, sum of n? It's the sum of all of these values, right? How the counts should add up to 9,794, which is the length of the entire data set. Uh, it will give you a count for the number of NAs. If there's a location, it's treat that as a distinct location. The, if you run a count operation on multiple things, it's going to basically summarize um, within location and topic. So there's two things that it wants to summarize by. So it's going to do all iterations of this topic description variable as well. So this is a way of kind of doing a, a pivot table in a way. So you're just doing all, or a summary table of just how many of each of these different variables are we getting data for? If there is, if any of these, um, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. yeah, yes, this is the point. So count will always include NAs as well. Um, so if I have, you know, say all 50 states are in there, but some of these, some of the topic descriptions are in A, it'll also have cessation, cessation, cigarette use, smokeless tobacco use, and then in A, and then we'll have a count for the number of NAs for Alabama as well. So if there are NAs at any level of this summarizing operation, it'll show up in this summary table. Okay, grouping is another really great feature of, um, of dplyr and the tidyverse. What it allows you to do is to structure your data in a way so that you can have sort of, sort of grouped summaries of your data. So the regular data you know, is displayed here. Um, but if I were to take this YTS grouped, and run this group by statement, I'm saying, let's group this data by levels of response. So there's a very, there's a column in here that is, that's called response. And we're just going to do like, do any sort of summary by response. 
notice that it doesn't really change anything about this data. So, you know, this is the regular data, the Tibble still, you know, almost 10,000 10, um, rows long, 31 columns. Same thing, you know, nothing has changed here, but it has now assigned this response. So it's saying, I am grouping by response now. I'm going to catch up over here. Okay. So it's grouped. It doesn't change the data, but it changes how functions operate on it. So any sort of summarizing operation that I do on this is now going to take those groups into account in the summary. If I take this YTS groups data and run this mean on the date value, data value, removing all the NAs, uh, it can calculate this average percent and it's just going to automatically run it for each of the groups of response. So there's three different response levels, current, ever, and frequent, um, but there's also an NA one. So what this is saying is, um, this is the, the group, the, the average within individuals who are current smokers. This is the ones who are the average for who have ever smoked. And then this one for NA is the average for people who have never, ever smoked. When you run, if you want to do um, multiple summarizing kind of operations and you have this group by, uh, it'll do it all the way. So here we're taking, instead of doing YTS grouped, we're going back to our original YTS data. We're grouping it. And then we are running two different operations on it. We're going to calculate the mean of the data value and the max of the data value. And it does that as you would expect, which across each of the levels of response. Uh, you could do it by response and education. You can add additional grouping factors. So um, now we are grouping by response and education. And what it'll do is similar to back over here. Um, oh, similar to this, to just doing the counts by multiple variables, it's going to, for each level of response and each level of education separately, it's going to give you these summary values. I notice here again, NA also gets subdivided into high school versus middle school because there's there's separate data for each of those. If you don't want to hold on to those groups, um, so this YTS grouped is is a grouped data frame, and you maybe you don't want to see those grouped summaries anymore, then you can use the ungroup function to remove that group. So notice under this tibble description, we no longer have any groups there. So it's it's been ungrouped. And if you were to run a mean or anything on this, it'll do it for the entire data set. And it's not gonna subdivide it by groups. Oh, this, yeah, I wouldn't, this would be, I would have to do that if I did this, right? So YTS gets assigned back to, to a group. So like, like, let's look at this. So YTS grouped. Yeah, but, if you overwrote it, you would have to do it like this. So see, it's it has groups here. And then I could just do YTS is ungrouped, ungroup YTS. Uh, and let's see that again. Now it's gone. So this is ungrouped now. So maybe we should change this to YTS underscore grouped. Because that's that's really what it what was happening there. Um, you could also take um 
by year, you might try to do something. You Maybe you want to calculate what is the mean for a given year instead of the mean for the entire data set. Well, first you can group by year. And so it's saying for all of the data, I want to subdivide it by, by year. And then I want to calculate the average for that year. Um, I could put that in a mutate um, and it'll add it as a new column in the data. Alternatively, you could just run that in, um, let's run this here. So YTS group by year summarize year average. the meaning of sure what. right so instead of actually putting it as a mutate into your your data you might also just want to output it and just say what is what's the average for each of my years and this will output it as a, a new tibble Uh, another way of doing, instead of using count, um, if you don't want just to, so count on its own, well, just, it'll output its own summary table and you would have, you can't really, there's, you can modify it, but it's, it's extra steps. You can kind of treat count as an operation unto itself um, and kind of put that inside of a summarize function as well. So say I want to know not just the mean, but how many values went went into calculating that mean. Well, what you can do is within your summarized statement, you can say n is equal to n open close parentheses. Um, and this just says, tell me the total number of rows within that group. So within a group, within a year, 1999, 372 values went into calculating this mean. They give very similar infor information, but um, the summarize is, is nicely kind of formatted into a tibble that you can keep manipulating if you want. In summary, count and sort of this in in parentheses will give you how many unique values are in a particular um, data set. Uh, you can look at kind of the unique unique values in a data set with unique or distinct. Um, and then you can use this group by function to take your data set, subset it into different kind of sets and then you can run summary statistics on that with summarize. Or you could do it, um, you can still do the group by and run a mutate function and um, get some summary statistics kind of within your original data frame if you want to retain those. We have a whole other lecture about data visualizations here. But this is just a nice way of introducing some of that to you um, using some, some dplyr verbs that we already understand really well, like pull. We love to plot things uh, because it's really nice. Instead of scrolling through all your data and trying to find you know, outliers or anything, sometimes it's easy just to plot it and just see if things look weird. Um, so these three different plot types are great ways of just getting a, a, an initial look at your data. Um, one of them is the histogram, which is sort of a, a frequency table of, of all the different values, the numeric values. We could also do a scatter plot. Uh, so how are 
variables x and y related to each other? Or similarly, kind of how is how is the variable uh, y related to this var variable x? Um, the box plot will give sort of a, a quantile summary of, of those two, of y in relation to x, which may be some sort of like categorical or, or um, other variable. A histogram might, oh, would look like this. Um, I just unplugged my stuff. Um, so we could take J2 cars and we can pull out miles per gallon and histogram will just take that value MPG and plot all the data. Um, alternatively, you could also, um, I think you could run it like this too. So J2 cars. Pull MPG and then hist by itself does the same thing, right? I can get my full histogram just from that. So you could do it in the tidy way as well. Uh, histogram has a way of, it has a default for how it assigns how many different breaks there are in the in the histogram. So this one, it's defaulting to bins of five MPG, but maybe you say, let's break it down to smaller bins. Um, and I wanna have 10 different breakpoints. So you could add this argument breaks to that as well. I think there's also a really good hist. You could also say, um, is there a way of specifying the number of breaks or the, the actual value of the breaks? I don't remember. Yeah, usually you just do, just tell it the number of breaks um, to break to separate it out into. A scatter plot, um, we could just take J2 cars and pull out miles per gallon, pull out the horsepower, and then we could plot it in this way. It is harder. I wonder if you can do it in a tidy way. So J2 cars, uh, select MPG and HP, plot, X equals Y equals MPG. Oh no. Okay, so that won't work. Did I do it wrong? Oh, it's H. Thank you. HP not found. What? Weird. Okay. Anyway. That works the way it should. Um, box plot, similar way. You can get um, sort of a quantile summary here. The way this looks, the you have to specify a formula. So you're going to have, have horsepower on the y-axis and cylinders on the x-axis. Uh, and it'll give you the, the normal statistical kind of summary. So the black line is the median. The gray box shows you the, the interquartile range. Uh, and then these lines above it kind of give you um, some, some measures of the outliers that might be in there. And I believe it's like 1.5 times the IQR. So there, those are some very quick plots that you can start to look your data at your data with.